Hello and welcome to Recyclist. It's July 14th, 2023. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and this is your weekly roundup of all the biggest news stories in the world of waste, gas, and energy presented by Diamond Scientific. First things first, let's take a look at the financial market and get an update on five of the biggest stocks within the industry. As of this recording, waste management stock is now up to $168.30 per share. Chenier has moved to $155.45 per share. Chevron Core is now trading at $153.62 per share. Vanek Low Carbon Energy is now at $126.84 per share. And Vanguard ESG is at $79.75 per share. First up in the news, researchers at Scotland's Rural College think daffodils may actually be the key to many countries reaching net zero carbon emissions. They found adding an extract from the flowers to livestock feed reduced methane in artificial cow stomachs by 96%. They're hoping when trialed in real cows, it could reduce methane emissions by at least 30%. A four-year program of trials is now beginning at farms around the UK. Jamie Newbold, a professor of animal science at Scotland's Rural College, said, quote, Our new project has three main stages. First, developing a supply chain of daffodils and extracting the chemicals. Secondly, testing that the additive is safe for both animals and humans. And finally, working with our farmer partners across England and Wales to prove the additive is effective in reducing methane production and feed costs for dairy cattle. This is vital because greenhouse gases and global warming is a major global challenge, and we hope our project will be part of the solution of reducing the role of ruminants in methane production. It is estimated half of the country's methane emissions actually come from cows, and globally, livestock produce around 14% of the world's greenhouse gases. This discovery was made by the college after initially cultivating the daffodils as an Alzheimer's treatment. And now for some science with much more unfortunate numbers. According to a recent study published in Environmental Health Research, air pollution from fossil fuel production was found to kill more than 7,500 people a year in the U.S. alone, while exacerbating 420,000 existing cases of asthma and triggering more than 2,000 new incidences of childhood asthma. Health damages from the three air pollutants studied, ozone, nitrogen dioxide, and fine particulate matter, were found to carry an annual price tag of $77 billion in health care. In the next few years, however, communities downwind of oil and gas production sites may be able to breathe a bit easier. Proposed U.S. Environmental Protection Agency regulations expected to be finalized next fall aim to cut methane and other air pollutants from hundreds of thousands of oil and gas operations across the country. The agency expects that by 2030, this rule will cut methane from these sources by 87% compared to those levels seen in the year 2005. But going to the business side of things, Clean Energy Technologies announced July 12th it has entered into a fixed price engineering, procurement, and construction contract with Vermont Renewable Gas for the proposed Lindenville Biogas to Power Facility. The contract is valued at $10 million and will see clean energy technology spearhead the design, construction, and operation of the new facility. The renewable fuel gas produced will be harnessed to generate sustainable electricity and heat. Anticipated to be fully commissioned within 12 months, the plant is projected to deliver over 14,600 megawatts of renewable electricity and 1,500 tons of biochar annually. CEO of Clean Energy Technologies, Cam Motti, said, quote, The Lindenville project is the first of many anticipated renewable biomass projects and is expected to serve as a model for developing new project opportunities to capture market share in this highly profitable and growing industry, end quote. 
And just a reminder, Recyclist is brought to you by Diamond Scientific, an industry leader in gas analysis, instrumentation, and solutions. Make sure to visit them online at diamondsci.com. That's diamondsci.com. Or call them at 321-223-7500. Now on with the news. Out in California, San Diego is borrowing $40 million from the state to help build a new 77 million green waste recycling plant in Miramar that is expected to serve the entire region's composting needs. City officials say the new plant, expected to begin operations next year, is needed to handle all the yard trimmings, food scraps, and other organic material that must be recycled under a new state law entitled SB 1383. The state is mandating that more green waste be recycled to fight climate change. The city council voted unanimously Tuesday to approve the 20-year state loan at an interest rate of about 3.7% and plans to be repaid with fees trash haulers pay to use the Miramar landfill. San Diego already operates the region's largest composting facility, the Miramar Greenery, but instead of expanding that facility, the city will tear it down and replace it with a larger version in a separate part of their landfill. On the other side of the country in Florida, the city of Pensacola is taking steps to reduce carbon emissions by fueling city vehicles with renewable natural gas. The city currently has 87 vehicles, including garbage and recycling trucks, that up until now were powered by compressed natural gas. Pensacola Energy has entered into an agreement with British Petroleum to use renewable natural gas now at no extra cost. Pensacola Energy Director Daryl Singleton said, quote, We're recapturing gas from a landfill that would be going to the atmosphere, so therefore we're kind of killing two birds with one stone. We're not wasting methane from a landfill, and we're not producing any toxins out of the tailpipe, end quote. This is part of the city's goal to use 30% renewable energy by 2030. And lastly, in Colorado, the Longmont City Council just passed a universal recycling ordinance to support the city's goal of diverting 75% of waste from landfills by 2030 and 95% by 2050. The ordinance focuses on a phased implementation for recycling and organics diversion for commercial and large multifamily properties, including requiring recycling services for all commercial and multifamily properties by June 1, 2024, requiring organics collection for select business types by June 1, 2025, and requiring composting for landscaping companies by 2029. The city said the URO helps build a clean and safe community that promotes healthy ecosystems that support clean air, water, and soil. The city of Longmont says they are committed to zero waste efforts and this universal recycling ordinance is a part of the sustainability plan in place to reach that goal. And that has been your Recyclist News Update for July 14th, 2023, presented by Diamond Scientific. I've been your host, Eric Provost, and we will see you back next Friday for a brand new episode of Recyclist. Thank you.